where it goes down. Where you hear about the sports all around town. In the country, all the controversy to the highlights. You just not safe in the line. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another great episode of The Stoop, where we talk hoops, hoops, and more hoops. I'm your guy, TJ. First and foremost, we got to thank our folks over there at Nuts and Bolts for the opportunity. We love you so much. Got to give a big shout out to my partner in crime, my co-host, co-founder. Shout out to my guy, Kev P. Kev P, talk to the people. As always, it's a pleasure to be here, for real. Hey, listen, Kev P, we got something special right here. Listen. He's the pride of Bay City, Michigan. He had a great illustrious career at the world famous Oak Hill Academy in Virginia. Went on to become a McDonald's All-American, a Parade All-American. Took his talents to the Cuse, that Syracuse University, by the way. He's a G League player, international pro ball player. Then he went back to the university to give his insight as a strength conditioning coach and a special coach back at the Cuse. And now you can find him on the sidelines at Detroit Mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome to the stoop, Mr. Eric Diefendorf. Mr. Eric Diefendorf, welcome, man. Thank you so much for coming through, bro. Oh, man, I appreciate you guys having me. Absolutely. So let's get right to it. Rumor has it coming from Bay City, man. That's where you got your toughness. True or false to that? Yeah, definitely, man. I, You know, uh, growing up playing, I was always playing with the older cats, you know. So I think for me, um, that just kind of helped me get tougher and, and you know, um, being the younger guy, you know, the older guy was always talking trash to me or talking down to me, beat, trying to beat me up. So um, it gave me a, a edge to play with. And, you know, I always had that when I played. I always played with a with a chip on my shoulder. And um, I, I take pride in that, you know what I mean? I want to go out there and, uh, you know, not take anything from, from anyone, you know what I mean? Just go out there and play as hard as I can and, uh, you know, as tough as I can. Got you, got you. So who actually first exposed you to the game of basketball? And the second part to that, around what age do you think you could do something with the sport and be great at it? So my dad, he uh, he introduced me to the game probably when I was about maybe seven or eight years old. Okay. Um, and, and really after that, you know, after he put the ball in my hands, it was, uh, I fell in love with it from there. You know, I was, I, I just remember as a kid, um, you know, getting up before, before school in the morning, um, and I'm from Michigan, so, you know, wintertime, it's snowing, I'm chipping the ice, you know, I'm I'm doing all that. I just fell in love with it, man. It was just uh, every single day, man, as a kid. I remember in the morning and after school, and then I go play at the Y on the weekends or, you know, during the weekdays. So it was, that's what it was, man, for me. It, it was ball all day. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I've been fortunate enough to, um, you know, be able to go to some pretty cool places through the game. Solid. So, Many high caliber athletes, man, in their high school dream, they want to go to the world famous Oak Hill. Oak Hill is synonymous with some of the great high school basketball players pretty much in the country. When did you make this decision that you wanted to leave Bay City for your senior year and head to uh, Oak Hill? And here's the one I always catch people with when I talk to Cassie with the Oak Hill. When you got the campus, see, because when you hear the name Oak Hill, you think you're going to get to this crazy place. But when you pull up, you be like, Okay, cool. So what was your thoughts when you pulled up and you seen what it actually looked like? And also, once again, when did you make the decision that you wanted to go to Oak Hill for your senior year? Go ahead. Well, so I was probably, it was probably my, my junior year. Um, I think after the season, uh, after the basketball season, my junior year, um, I decided, me and my AU coach, we were talking about it for a while. Um, and then actually in that spring, I was at the Bob Gibbons uh, basketball tournament in, in North Carolina. Uh, Coach Smith and all the assistants, they came there and watched me play. Um, and I remember speaking to them a little bit. Uh, and then just, just a couple of weeks after that, you know, we kind of wrapped it up about, um, you know, transferring to Oak Hill. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough to play with some awesome guys, man. Kevin Durant, Taiwan Lawson, Jamont Gordon, uh, you know, Bamba Fall, he went to SMU, David Palmer. So all, uh, you know, all Division One guys. And, uh, you know, like you said, yeah, man, like it's in the said, middle of nowhere. Like you said, like you said man. It's uh, it's, uh, you know, it's you know, it's flying to Charlotte, flying to Charlotte, and then uh, and then uh, it's a two and a half a hour drive half from the hour. airport. So, yeah. um, and then when you get there, it's in it's in you know the middle of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So, uh, you know, definitely not expected, but uh, you know, when you go in that gym and see all those jerseys, I mean, it's hundreds of jerseys, man, all all Division One guys, and uh, you know, just pretty fortunate to be able to play in that gym at that school with you know with the type of basketball history that it has. Absolutely. Just as you said, uh, senior year, you joined the likes of guys like Kevin Durant and Ty Lawson. Was there ever a concern that 
from an individual standpoint that you may have hindered recruiting chances or were you more of the mindset that playing alongside these guys and being in that particular program would help you develop more as, as well as gain exposure? Was that my thought? Well, see, it was different back then, man. Like I, you know, nowadays you, you know, guys right off top, like, cause it's the internet and you know, you know, where they playing and what they've been doing. You know, I think as I got older in high school, it maybe started a little bit more ahead of videos, but, you know, the type of dude I was, I was, I, I had a dog mindset. So I'm not, I'm not thinking about it. I'm going in there hooping. I don't care who it is. You know what I mean? I don't care if you're number one in the country, whatever it is. Like when I step out on that court, you know, I know what I can do. So, you know, if you get in front of me, you're going to have, you're going to have to deal with me. You know what I'm saying? So um, I wasn't even really worried about who was there. I was just ready to go out there and hoop, man. And um, it just, you know, happened to be that, you know, I got to team up with one of the greatest to ever do it, you know, and, and Kevin Durant. And then, um, like I said, it was, you know, eight, nine other division one players there as well. So yeah, man, I had that dog mindset going in, you know, just, you know, ready to roll. And, uh, it was an awesome experience. So going there with all these great guys, you, you have a great senior year when the championship, the, the champion classic title, um, earn a spot on the, all, on the McDonald's all American squad, round ball classic co-West MVP. Then you head off to Syracuse, and despite not starting the first few games, you managed to still have a really good freshman year and make the all-rookie team. Uh, what can you tell us about that transition from high school to college and your ability to push through despite some of the earlier challenges? Well, uh, first off, I think me going to Oak Hill, it was already setting me up for you know what I was going to experience going into Syracuse. I mean, the guys I was playing with, I mean, we had a team that, you know, probably could have competed with, you know, a lot of these low level division one teams, you know what I'm saying? At Oak Hill, you know, that's the type, that's the type of talent that we had. So um, I was already prepared going into college uh, with the competition level that I was coming for and or coming from in the mindset that I had already. Um, like we talked about me, that's this type of player I had, the type of mindset I had. So, um, and then I was fortunate enough to have good teammates my first year, Jerry McNamara, uh, Terrence Roberts, Demetrius Nichols, all guys that, um, they made me feel comfortable. So, uh, you know, when, when I got it there, I, you know, I felt comfortable. I fit in right away, and that just gave me the confidence to go ahead and, and do my thing. And like you said, um, didn't start the first four games, but I remember in practice, I'm, I'm going for that spot. And, you know what I mean? And after that, after that, you know, four games, um, it was mine, and, and I never gave it up from then. And, uh, you know, that just goes, you know, with the mindset. You know, I'm just going to go out there and, and leave it all on the floor and play hard and not really worry about, uh, you know, about other people, just trying to control what I can control. Yes, indeed. Well, you and um, Andy Rottens were vital to that Cuse basketball team. Uh, as a backcourt back duo, you spent a lot of times competing not only against the opposition, but kind of against each other as well. How integral was he in your development and you to his? And another question is, how supportive were the two of you to one another when you both suffered some knee injuries? Uh, I mean, that's my guy right there. One, probably one of the best shooters I ever, I ever played with, but I ever saw in my life. I mean, the dude can flat out shoot the ball from anywhere on the court. Um, and he, you know, he always had my back. Um, and we never really looked at it like we were competing against each other. I mean, obviously in practice, I'm not holding back. I'm, I'm going at you because that's just how I am. When I'm on the court, I'm competitive dude. So when we practicing, we scrimmaging, we doing drills against each other. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear all that, you know, just like we, mm -hmm. we playing in the game. But I think, you know, that type of mentality, um, that makes you better as a team. You know what I mean? Because now it rubs off to the other guys and um, they have that same type of energy. So uh, we fed well off each other. Um, you know, I, I like to be able to drive and kick into the lane and kick it out to him. And uh, I know he was knocking that thing down and, I think as Andy got further into his career, his game just developed so much. Like he was a six five, you know, point forward guy. He could shoot the ball, but he could handle it and make decisions as well. And um, you know, I saw him grow, um, you know, throughout his career. And um, about the like we said about the ACL, you know, we had each other's back. Like we, he was he uh, injured his knee before me, so he kind of uh, you know just gave me a little bit of advice about what it's like to go through it and stuff like that. So. Um, you know, we still talk to this day. That's my guy and, um, you know, another great teammate that I was fortunate to play with. Oh. So, 
arguably the greatest stage in the world is the Mecca, it's Madison Square Garden. It just so happens the Big East tournament is played there every year. So listen, bro, yeah. it turned everybody up. Everybody, after Mike did his thing, it's the Lord of Garden, right? <laughs> you, by your senior year, went crazy in there. So the question I got to ask you is, was you just doing your thing and playing your game, or did you just feel the pressure to guard and you just want to show out one time? What's up? I mean, you know, when you know anyone who's played in in Madison Square Garden, it's a different type of energy when you when you step onto that court. You know what I mean? Just knowing all the history, um, you know. Besides basketball, you got all the big time performers in there: Muhammad Ali, Michael Jackson, you know, all the other musicians. So. Right. Uh, the history and the energy in that building is unmatched anywhere in the world. You know what I mean? And then, uh, you know, put it on in the Big East tournament and uh, on ESPN against all your rivals. So the stage is set up. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm already the type of dude who like all that. I want all that. Like I want, I want all the smoke. Like I want all everything set up so I can I can go against it and have that challenge and and try to come up on top of it. So um, I loved it, man. I loved playing in the garden. It was it was you know no place like it. And, um, you know, us being Syracuse, it was kind of like a home game for us, you know, because we had so many fans, you know, just right down there in the city. So, um, you know, every time we played there, the support was unreal. And, um, yeah, man, it was a different type of energy for me. So uh, I, I think I played, you know, well every time in the garden, man. It was just it was just that type of energy and, um, you know, that let me go out there and just, you know, play my game and do my thing. Okay. Okay. So you already mentioned him, but uh... – Jerry Mack had already a championship pedigree from winning the national title with the earlier team. And by his senior year, you was like his young fella taking you under his wing. Share some of the yeah. things that he, in, in, the, in the gems that he dropped for you and how he helped um, groom you to be the next big thing at the Q's and, and how you followed kind of like in his footsteps and you took over and did your thing. Yeah, well, I mean, that was my guy. He he really kind of instilled the confidence in me to go ahead and just play my game. You know, I mean, for a freshman guy, guard coming in there, you know, for, so I, like I said, I already had the confidence. So I'm, I don't really need anybody to big me up because I'm going to go out there and, and believe in myself and do my thing anyway. But when you have a senior guard, a guy who won a national championship, who's legitimately stamped in Syracuse basketball history and in, in, in college basketball in general, right? Uh, you know, give, give you that confidence and steal you that confidence. Now, my belief in myself going to a whole nother level, you know, it's just, it's just jumping up a whole nother level. So, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have, to have him in my corner and, and we're still close to this day. Uh, you know, we talk all the time. Um, but you know, he, he was just like me, you know, everybody be like, Oh, that's, you know, you know, cause it's two white guys or whatever, but in reality, <laughs> nah, y'all, y'all was some different out there. That, that, that. that was the dogs. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so, but, it, but like you said, we were the same type of mentality and uh, we were going to go at it. So um, we fed off each other, man. Like if, if I know, you know, I had my two, I was going to go at him and I look at him and he look over at me, like, give me the ball, it's my turn. You know what I mean? So uh, to have two dogs in the backcourt to deal with, you know, night in, night out, the opposing team, like, you know, that was something to deal with. So uh, it was, it was pretty awesome to be able to play with him and, and have that confidence from him and me. Yeah, y'all was amazing to watch that season, man. I love that. That joint was all right. Go ahead, Kat. What's up? Well, you were definitely amazing to watch that season, but I want to talk about the season 2007. You guys were famously snubbed from the NCAA tournament. Do you yeah. recall where you were and what you were doing when you heard that news? Oh, yeah, I know exactly where I was. We was, we was, watching, uh, we was watching the selection show in Coach Bayham basement. And, you know, I just remember all the teams getting picked. And I'm like, man, I'm seeing these teams getting picked before. We just got done beating them. And I remember we ended that year, like, it was eight and two our last 10 games. We ended up beating Georgetown, who was on a 12-game winning streak. And there was, like, top five in the country with Roy Hibbert and Jeff Green and, you know, those guys. So uh, we were, we were like, oh, we in. You know what I'm saying? We're not even thinking nothing about it. So I remember being in the basement and, you know, our name didn't get called. And, and I just remember just get, getting out of there, man. I decided to be by myself because it was it was disappointing, man. We earned it. I mean, we were in the best conference in the country. Um, like I said, our last ten games, we were eight and two. So uh, I think the committee really looks at those last, you know, that latter part of the season to really see how you're doing. Um, you know, tuning tune up going into the into the tournament. So uh, it was definitely disappointing, uh, but you know what it is what it is, and you know we ended up doing pretty good in the NIT, but. Um, that's definitely something that, you know, I wish we could have got back so we could have had 
uh, you know, a chance to compete that year in the tournament. True. There's a rumor that one of your former teammates at Oak Hill, Kevin Durant, almost joined you at Syracuse. Uh, any idea as to why that didn't happen? And had it happened, you almost surely would have would not have been snubbed, as we discussed. So uh, what do you think about that? Do you think he was that final piece that quite possibly could have taken you guys all the way? Oh, I think somebody asked me this on another when I did another interview about the same thing. Um, I think it was what hit the connection was Troy Weaver because um, he's from D.C. Um, okay. But I mean, if KD would have came, he could he could have came to anywhere. He could have went to Howard and it made mm -hmm. a difference. Or or you know what I'm saying? Like any of those mid major schools, and it made a difference. But you put them, you know, in Syracuse in that back line or in the or in the top. It doesn't matter wherever you want to, whatever you want to do. Uh, I mean, we'd have automatically been competing for for a national championship. I mean, that's what the type of guy he is, man. You just add a guy six eleven who can dribble and, and shoot like a guard. I mean. You know, come on, man. And then, and then you, you know, we got weapons. You know, myself and and, and D Nick, and uh, we had athletic forwards throughout the roster. So, um, yeah, he, you know, he would have added a whole nother level for sure. Especially with that two-three defense, but that's another thing. No question. My turn. Um, man, it's a lot I want to ask too, man. Let me see something. All right, next one. Growing up, being a fan of the game, is there somebody that you might have mirrored your game off of or somebody you try to, you know, get your style from a little bit in terms of how you want to play, whether it was uh, handling a rock or, you know, how you pulled up, whatever the case was. Second part is, who is your team that you follow growing up? Maybe not the team that you thought about maybe playing for one day in the collegiate level, but was there a team that you liked growing up as a kid as well? Uh, so first question, uh, my favorite player of all time is Allen Iverson. I mean, that was just that was just my guy, uh, just how hard he played. I mean, I remember me and AI and, uh, you know, he's shorter than me, skinnier than me. You know what I mean? And you see him out there night in and night out, putting his body on the line, getting hit down, getting right back up every single play. And I just I, I just always uh, had a another level of respect for guys who just always play hard. You know what I'm saying? Who always throughout the whole game, you know, you, you, you knew they were playing hard and you knew they were passionate and competitive about the game. And, um, you know, that's how I am, man. I, I love to play the game. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm going to go out there and play as hard as I can. You know what I mean? And, and it's a lot of stuff that come with it, whether it's talking trash, getting somebody, it's just, that's just how it is. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, people can take it the other way, but, um, that's how I learned playing, you know, growing up, you know, that's, it's when I'm talking to you and we going back and forth, that's my competitive nature. That's my love and, and passion for the game. And, uh, you know, I think whenever you love something a whole lot, you know, you're going to have some of that, you know what I mean? Whether it's in sports or whatever it is that you're trying to be great at, you know what I mean? So, um, and then, so and then the second question, sorry, what was the second question again? The question was, was my any, favorite team? any team, any team that you watched or you followed as a kid growing up, any collegiate team? Allegiant team. Uh, or maybe share the pro team. Nah. You got a pro team that you, you, you mess yeah. with? Who? Well, who? I, I mean, I'm a Michigan guy, so I always try to, you know, support locally, like Michigan, Michigan State. Uh, okay. It's funny because Michigan, I was a football fan, but basketball, I was Michigan State. And, and you know, I committed to Michigan State before I committed to, to Syracuse. My sophomore year, I committed to Michigan State. Um, and it just happened to be I was at the Michigan State game. 2003 when that when Syracuse won a national championship right that so they were playing at Breslin Center that year when they had Mello and GMAC and all them um, so that's what made me change my mind to go to Cuse I remember seeing the pace and how they play with Hakeem Ward, Mello, GMAC, Billy Eland um, and if you guys remember Billy Eland he was like he was like Andre Miller I mean he was like if you and you, you know how cold you know how cold Andre Miller was he was getting 50 in the NBA with, a, with an old man's game you know what I mean so um, Cuse has some ball players, man, and and that's what kind of made me want to change my mind to go there. And um, yeah, so I, I was committed at Michigan State at first, and then it just so happened that I, you know, was at that Cuse game. So yeah, I guess I was a Michigan State fan until they came, uh, until they came and played Cuse. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, you have been a real orange man through and through, bleeding that man. And for the TBT, you've been a part of Bayham's army for quite a while, man. What's it like playing with your old comrades? What's it like playing in that level of competition? And what's it like still, you know, representing for, for, for your school? How does that feel for you? Oh, man, super, super grateful, man, still to be able to do it. I mean, anybody who, you know, plays sports 
knows that you can't do it for your whole life. You know what I'm saying? It's you start to feel it. I'm 33 and you know, I still love to do it every every day, get out there with them young fellas. And, but I could, you know, I could, I could feel it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's it, days are numbered, you know what I mean? The body, you know, is just talking to you and, and all that. So, um, you know, when, when I'm able to get out there for those two weeks with, you know, with those guys, some guys I play with, some guys I, I watch, you know, uh, growing up. So, um, and it's one big family, man. So it's just like a, uh, you know, a big get together for those two weeks, you know, you know, we get to kick it and, and, and joke and talk and do all that, talk about, you know, old games and things like that. So uh, it's really a, a highlight of the summer for me, man, to be able to get there and, and, and compete with those guys. And, um, you know, besides off the court and then, you know, we get to go on the court, you know what I'm saying? And, right. and, and still compete and still compete. And obviously it's a, uh, a pretty good incentive with the money, but, um, again, I just like to get out there and compete, man. And, and I can still do it a little bit. So, uh, I'm gonna do it till I can't. Oh, you do it a whole lot. And the second yeah. part of that question is, man, so when you out there for TBT and you guys get up and down the floor, do you ever get that itch to give it one more go professionally? How does that feel for you, man? Oh man, absolutely. It's just, you know, for me, uh, I know I can still do it like against anybody high level. And I know that, but you know, I've been out the game for a while. Um, and you know, this is how it is when you haven't played in a while, you know, overseas or whatever it is, they looking at you and, you know, asking all those questions. So, and then, you know, obviously the money wouldn't even be worth it to, to go over there and do it. Um, you know, I could be here and, and, and just do what I'm doing now with, with the basketball stuff and, in cues, but, um, definitely, man, I, I still love to do it. And, you know, I still, you know, get up and down with these dudes out here at Cuse and, uh, and, you know, we get up and, and talk trash a little bit. Uh, I'm close with, um, you know, coach Beheim and, uh, fortunate enough to get down he has a gym in his house so we go down there and I you know I play with uh, both his sons Buddy and Jimmy who are you know ones at Syracuse and ones at Cornell so um, you know I was really doing that all summer man we were just playing one-on-one -on -one and um, you know going at each other and you know it, it's good for me but it's better for them because it helps them and because I'm I'm busting I'm busting their head you know I'm going at them they're not I'm not gonna let them win any game so uh, they get to go <laughs> They get to go back and tell that to their teammates, like, man, this dude still got it a little bit. But, uh, but no, nah, man, I love it. I love to compete, man, for sure. No doubt. Bad, Cap. Speaking of TBT, uh, this year's tournament saw some changes, um, obviously because of the pandemic. How difficult was it to have to do some of the quarantining at the hotel for several days and adhering to some of the changes leading up to playing and so on and so forth? Well, I mean, I guess it wasn't really too bad. Um, TBT did a great job of uh, making sure everybody was safe and keeping everybody, uh, you know, in their rooms and away from each other. Um, but I mean, if you've been overseas, guys who played overseas, that's that's what we're doing anyway. You you go into practice and you're going right back home. You know, you had two practices a day, so you're not trying to do anything anyway. Go back home, right. get back up, do the same thing. You know what I mean? So basically, that was kind of uh, you know what we were doing at the hotel. I mean, the only thing difference is you can't leave the hotel, but. Uh, you know, guys are, everybody grown and, you know, they know what they had to do before they came. So, uh, you know, everybody came there and, and buying in to, you know, get one thing accomplished. And um, again, TBT did a great job of holding it. And you know, I'm looking forward to uh, getting after it next year, hopefully with fans. Dope. Well, let's move away from you actually playing for one moment. And uh, I want to talk about Ed 23 Hoops. Uh, it's a basketball training and development business that you're spearheading. And what yeah. I find make yours a bit different than others is you work with youth, work with high school, college, and pro athletes. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk about the program a little bit, please. Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, I just want to stay doing what I love to do. And, and you know, Syracuse was, uh, I'm fortunate enough that Syracuse has given me a, uh, a pretty good platform in the city. Um, to where when I want to do something and, and, you know, involve the kids, you know, I get a good response. And, um, you know, so I it really just started with me putting it out like, hey, you know, hit me up, email me about working the kids out. And, uh, you know, I got a huge response and just started doing a lot of one on one and group trainings and in camps and clinics. And um, it was you know super busy up until obviously, um, you know, the pandemic. And now, you know, now things are starting to kind of start rolling again with the you know one on one and individual stuff. Um, but it's just, you know, it's just allowed me to do a lot of stuff, man. Um, you know, like you said, I work with the youth. Um, I work with, you know, high school, college, professional. Uh, and then I also do a lot of charity events, you know, you know, uh, shoe drives, coat giveaways, 
um, uh, back to school events. Like next Saturday, uh, we have a back to school event uh, where we're doing 75 kids. You know, we're only limited to 75 because of the because of the virus or whatever. But um, 75 kids, they'll get they'll come in and get a free basketball clinic. Um, they'll get everybody get free basketball shoes, free backpacks, t-shirts, uh, and then they have the option to get their hair cut. Um, and then everybody gets free box lunches. So, uh, nice. again, Syracuse has gave me a platform to where I could do a lot of things and I want to use that platform in the right way. Um, so I figured, Hey, this is, this is the best way to do it. And, um, what better way to do it through basketball? Well, I'm glad to hear that you guys are still doing all these things uh, as we make our way through this pandemic. But in the earliest stages of the pandemic, certainly didn't slow you down either. Uh, you started posting instructional videos and they took off. Um, yeah. well, let's talk about Derek Lyons and his Fulton High School team specifically. How did that come about? Well, yeah, man. So, you know, like everybody else, you know, we were trying to figure out what to do, right? Try to, you know, in the house stuck. So, you know, first it just started with me just, just going outside and dribbling, you know what I mean? Try to uh, get some stress off my chest, you know what I'm saying? And um, I ended up, you know, just videoing it and recording it, um, you know, just simple drills that, I, you know, I used to do growing up. And, uh, you know, like you said, it got a great response. So I just continued with the videos and, um, you know, I had ESPN reach out to me about them and, um, a whole bunch of different coaches. And like you said, Derek, me and Derek had a uh, prior relationship um, uh, just from doing work with each other. But uh, we were doing, you know, video Zoom sessions every week, twice a week uh, with ball handling and footwork stuff uh, with his girls team. And then um, I also did the boys team out there. So it'd be like, you know, anywhere from 30 to 40 kids on a Zoom session um, doing that twice a week. So uh, you know what, just, just trying to find some positive to put out, man. And, and hopefully some, some of these people can grasp it and, and take what they can out of it. You know what I mean? And, um, I was fortunate enough, like I said, to have that platform and you know what I kept, I, you know, I kept putting that stuff out there, kept getting good responses and positive responses. So, um, you know, I just kept feeding them, you know what I mean? And, uh, it was good, man. It, it, it was really good. It, um, a lot of coaches from around the country hit me up and asked me about different drills and, um, you know, I do like, you know, speaking sessions for coaches at times and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I just think all the stuff that, um, you know, I'm trying to do and trying to put out is positive. And then you just kind of, you know, take the opportunities that come from that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So home life now. Um, Madeline and Miranda are likely enjoying all this daddy daughter time as we deal with the pandemic. Yeah. And as parents, right. you've decided not to uproot them and remain in Syracuse while you coach for the Detroit Mercy. Uh, mm -hmm. You've been there two years, but tell us about the difficulty of being away and even more so when you return. I mean, you know, you always, you always have to sacrifice, you know, something, right? And, um, you know, to be able to, uh, you know, help the family. And it's going to be one thing or another, whether it's time or, whatever it could be. So I, I was just, for me, um, you know, trying to make the best decision for my family to where, you know, they could be taken care of. And, um, you know, my girls have the best you know, education they could have. And, uh, you know, hopefully they just understand and see dad, you know, sacrifice it for them. Um, so when they grow up, they'll understand like, hey, this is, you know, this is what I need to do. You know, for when I have a family, I got to be able to, uh, you know, sacrifice, you know, some things that I might want um, to do to the betterment of my family. So, uh, you know, it's tough, man. I, I mean, I tell you, I could go through it. Like, you know, am I making the right decision and doing this or that? But uh, at the end of the day, I just want to make sure they're all good. They got everything that they need. And um, that kind of puts me at ease knowing that um, they have everything they, you know, they need and um, to go ahead and, you know, be successful. You had the opportunity, man, to be, Coach by and work with a Hall of Fame coach and Coach Jim Beheim. Jim Hey Beheim is less arguably known as going to be the, going down as I listen at some point. I don't even think it's going to be called the Carrier Dome anymore. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, he's awesome. What did you get more from? Was it him as your coach or him um, being on the staff? And what's the difference between the two? Um, and maybe something that people don't know about Coach Beheim that is really just awesome for you personally. 
so I think I probably got more from him when I got on the staff just because for me it was my maturity level was at a whole different stage you know what I mean when I when I was in college I was 18 years old I felt invincible I'm playing at Syracuse you know what I'm saying I'm on TV every every week so you know how that is your ego is all pumped up and I'm not really trying to hear about what he's trying to say all the time <laughs> so uh even though I probably should have for sure but I think um uh, he, he really helped me tremendously, man. Um, and when, you know, I was able to come back and finish my degree because I left early and I didn't finish my degree. Um, and then, you know, you know, played overseas for a while. And then I, he, you know, he allowed me to come back and finish up. Uh, and then, you know, a couple of years later, allowed me to get back on staff. And, and, and that's really where I was like, understood, you know, what really goes into being a head coach. Um, and, you know, we just talked about sacrifice being away from your family. I mean, these dudes are, you know, in the office all day, all night, you know, looking at film, breaking down film. Um, the preparation that goes into, um, you know, having a great team. I mean, you got to think this dude has been at the same university for 46 years. I think it's 44, 40, this will be his 45th season. I mean, that's unheard of anywhere. I don't care if you're coaching middle school, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, to, to be in one spot. Is, is unbelievable and, and one thing mm -hmm. he really taught me and, and that I really kind of took from him is um, you know how patient he is you know how, how he keeps calm and he keeps his composure in every single situation you know because um, you got to think all these egos you're dealing with coming in um, you know these young kids has, have been the man wherever they went in high school through, all the way up to high school now they coming into to Syracuse you could have a couple other McDonald's uh, Americans with you too so you got to figure out how to deal with all those egos and mesh and put these guys together so we can, you know, win as a team. And um, that could be tough, man. And, and just to watch him be patient, be calm, be, you know, be composed in all those situations. And then, um, you know, we're not even talking about, you know, in the game, you know, when you, you know, in the clutch and uh, you down with this much time left, um, him just writing up a play, calm, cool, collected. Um, and, and uh, you know what, when coaches do that, um, you know, it just goes off to your team. Now right. they kind of not now they feel that they know that he's not he's not panicking. Why should we? So um, that's one thing I really took from him is you know always be calm, cool, collected, and you know and patient. And um, you know because when you do that, it's just your thoughts and everything is are more focused and more direct um, rather than you know you getting flustered and doing all, now you're all over the place. So that's one thing that he really he really taught me, and I, I have it. I've had that st stick with me. Awesome, no doubt. Um, you talked about hooping. You like to be that dog and go at it. But every yeah. dog, you know, needs some of that great footwear. Talk about, you know, a favorite pair of kicks of yours that you like to rock when you hoop. What's your favorite ki uh, kick to rock the hoop? So <laughs> so in college, my favorite pair was the free ones, the ones that they was giving to me for free. <laughs> <laughs> you always had that night deal, so. Yeah, we, I mean, it, shoes wasn't, it wasn't an issue. My, I mean, and this was, uh, you know, growing up, you know, AAU and we was getting, I was getting shoes since, you know, 13, 14 years old, you know, just from that. And then, you know, then I go to Oak Hill, I got KD with me and Ty Lawson. These dudes getting, you know, boxes of Nike every week. You know what I'm saying? The KD, I remember KD had all the exclusive. We were, I'm like, man, like, and you know, they would, look out and send us a pair every now and then too. So, um, but for me, I think the, the most comfortable shoes I ever played in was, um, uh, the Bugs Bunnies, the Jordans. And I had to, uh, eights? The eights? Okay. You know, yeah. I'm not good with the numbers and all that. Cause I'm not, a, I mean, don't get mad at me. Cause some, some cool. people, they'll, they'll be mad at me. For, nah, uh, for not knowing like that. They, they crisscross though. They crisscross. Yeah, yeah. Facts. And they got the 23 right in the middle of the crisscross. Yeah, and, that's the eights. And, uh, yeah, my man had got me, um, when we played before a big Georgetown game and they was, you know, the, the Q's colors. And, and I remember coming out with them on, you know, ESPN, it was, they just had came out. And so, um, I, I yeah, I, I remember getting some text messages about those. So, um, yeah, those were probably the ones that, you know, really stood out to me. I, I ain't know they had no Q's exclusive. I got to do my research on those. Yeah. Hey, they I had heard that right here live on the stoop. Orange and gray. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, this has been a pleasure, man, having you on tonight, man. I got another question for you real quick. Um, if we had to put together the all-time Syracuse roster, and I know it's going to be tough, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you out of the equation. I'm going to make you the official coach. You got a 10-man oh, cool. roster 
that you got to fill all time from top to bottom. I know I'm going to give you a second, but you got 10 roster spots. Go ahead, whenever you're ready. You want a whole 10, not even a starting five? Woo. Yeah, he gave me a whole 10. <laughs> <laughs> think, of, think about it. That that transcends a lot of years. You know, Coach Bay, no I'm 40 plus. So I give you 10 spots. I'm curious. Okay. Okay, so at the one, um, I'm going to do two each position just so I have a backup. Well, that's cool. Okay, okay so so I'll give you the one. At the one, I'm going to have Pearl. At the one, start. And then the backup is going to be uh, Johnny Flynn. Uh, okay. at the t at the at the two guard spot, uh, give me Lawrence Moten. Uh, and then and then and then the backup spot, um, give me Deion Waiters. Oof. Uh, at the at the three starting at three, give me uh John Wallace. And then um, uh, no matter of fact, sorry, I'm tripping. Give me Carmelo at the three, sorry. And then the, and then the backup spot is um uh, is Jay Dub. Okay. Uh, at the four, give me Derek Coleman, DC. DC. Um, and then who's going to be at the four right there? Billy, give me Billy Owens. Billy give Owens. me Billy Owens. And then at the five, give me um, give me uh, Roosevelt Bowie and then Eton Thomas. And that was easy, man. No, hold up. You, you right, Ronnie, that. Ronnie, Ronnie ain't getting out at the five? Ronnie I mean, yeah, I, 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 it was, it crossed my mind, but Rosie, <laughs> those are my guys right there. Those are my guys right there. I, I, I know Ronnie. I don't know him like that, but it could, I could have said Dolph Shays. You know yeah. what I mean? I could have said Danny Shays. So Listen, there's a lot, a lot of guys man. that came through that program that you could have mentioned, man. There's yeah, a lot of guys. I, I, I missed out a couple. Like I, I could have said Dave Bing. I, you know what I mean? Dave Bing right. really could have been at the two. Sherman Douglas. You know, there's a Sherman lot of guys. Douglas. Sherman Douglas, I could have put him at the one for sure, but Johnny's my guy. That's my guy. Johnny was like that. Good, man. Listen, that wasn't easy, but you made it look easy. Yeah. Johnny was cold. <laughs> like, I don't care Johnny. what anybody say. At the Q's, Johnny was that dude. Yeah. He was Probably. supposed to be he, he was supposed to be a, a all-star. You know what I'm saying? He was, unfortunately he got hurt, but his I mean, he was an all-star level guy, like in the NBA for sure. Like right now, he'd have been playing, like he'd have been a, he'd have been an all-star, no question. Johnny was that dude, like he, I mean, like you, he was another dude that showed up when he got to that garden. Johnny in that garden was special. Same type of mindset, like he was a straight dog. Like that's all I want you, if you, I want you rolling with me if you a dog, no question. He, that's, he was that, like he was for sure. Oh, most definitely. When, whenever, when it came down to Big East tournament in the garden, Johnny went to a whole nother spectrum. Whole nother yeah, spectrum. he wanted all that. He, he wanted all that for sure. He wanted most all definitely. that, he, for sure. Hey, listen, bro, it's been a pleasure, man. Like, I want to definitely wish you all the best while you coaching, man. All that knowledge and all the things that you've been through with your career internationally, a G League, being part of one of the, arguably one of the best and dominant programs in college basketball. Um, we know you're going to give all the young men that you, you build and help working with, even in your program, the very best. Um, so we salute you and all that. We really say thank you for being on the stoop today, man. Absolutely, man. It's my pleasure. It's, I, I had a good time, man. I appreciate y'all. All right, absolutely. Hey, listen, man, it's been another great episode of The Stoop. Our special guest, Eric Diefendorf, we thank you so much. For my guy, Kev P, we'll see y'all next time. Some say that it gets no real on the field or the court. We capture the thrillers, some opinions and all of the truth. Real people talking real sports on The Stoop. <laughs>